I'm Doris Dean in Washington with this week's Caribbean American News Roundup. Washington has been the hub of activity this week, starting Monday with the second half of the first annual Caribbean Tourism Summit. All eyes and ears were focused on former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, who offered poignant advice to the Caribbean in his chat with Sir Dwight Venner, Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Development Bank. The skill levels in the region have to go up. So he spoke about productivity, he spoke about education, these things go together. Monday night's Gala Black Tie Awards dinner and ball recognized Caribbean luminaries such as Professor the Honorable Rex Nettleford and the Mighty Sparrow, who have honored the Caribbean brand with their lives work. When they asked me to describe a Caribbean person, I said, well, we are part African, part European, part Asian, part Native American, but totally Caribbean. Put your hands in the air! Over 500 guests danced to the sweet sounds of the legendary Byron Lee and the Dragonairs. The summit closed on Tuesday evening with a festive rum and rhythm celebration featuring award-winning rums, exotic delicacies, and rhythm from Anguilla to Guyana and from Martinique to Curacao. Also in Washington, recognition of Caribbean Heritage Month continued with a series of briefings at the OAS, the U.S. Capitol, the Census Bureau, and at the White House, where invitees were updated on initiatives in health and trade on behalf of the Caribbean community. On Friday, a youth forum on Caribbean development and careers in development took place at the Inter-American Development Bank. <laughs> Celebrations wrapped up on Saturday with the 16th annual DC Caribbean Carnival Parade on Georgia Avenue, led by DC's first solar-powered car, the product of Renewable Energy Alliance, a partnership among a group of Caribbean and American entrepreneurs. One unique feature of DC Caribbean Carnival is the diversity of cultures represented. They range from American Indian to Panamanian. And finally, in New York, four men accused of plotting to blow up John F. Kennedy International Airport remain behind bars without bail. Kareem Ibrahim, Abdel Noor, Abdel Qadir, and one other man all pleaded not guilty in Brooklyn Federal Court on Wednesday. The men were indicted last June, charged with scheming to blow up a jet fuel pipeline at JFK. They fled to Trinidad, claiming their innocence and no chance of a fair trial in the United States. They fought extradition, but were returned to the U.S. on Monday, after a Trinidadian judge cleared the way. Defense attorneys say the men were victims of government entrapment and there was no real threat. Federal prosecutors say an informant taped the men planning the attack. That's it for this week's Caribbean American News Roundup. For CMC News, I'm Darius Dean in Washington.